Hi everybody and welcome to this webinar where we're going to be looking at Amplify, the next generation B2B e-commerce platform for A plus and fax users. My name is Robin Aitken, I'm the product manager and vice president of e-commerce solutions. Also on this call, we have Nadia Nadim from Infor and Ralph Wallace from Sequoia, who you're going to be hearing from a little bit later. Just a little bit of housekeeping. We expect this to last between 30 and 40 minutes, and then we have a period at the end where we can try to answer as many questions as possible. So if you do have a question, please just type it into the question box on your screen, and we'll get to them at the end. And with that, I'm just going to hand over briefly to Craig Bassin, CEO at EasyAsk, to just explain who EasyAsk are. Craig. Thanks, Robin. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Craig, CEO of EasyAsk. Pleasure to be with you guys today. I'm going to take just a quick five minutes and give you a quick overview of who our company is, the nature of our relationship with Infor, our history with uh, e-commerce with Infor, which was initially primarily storefront. And so let me just briefly go through this, and I won't take up too much time here. Um, many of you may know, and many, many of you may not know, that uh, EasyAsk is an, uh, an AI-based, natural language, linguistic search engine. And so that means it's intelligent, it's intuitive. Uh, when we talk about AI, you see that term bounced around all over the place. Essentially, when you're talking about artificial intelligence, you're talking about a computer or a software program that makes decisions the way a person would. Um, EasyS does exactly that. So it's uh, it's mobile, it's mobile voice enabled, um, and candidly, it is the world's most intelligent e-commerce search engine. And for that, uh, Gartner, uh, which is the preeminent uh, technology analytics firm in the world, awarded us Cool Vendor of the Year a number of years back for best practices in e-commerce, the way we uh, have an understanding of the context of a question and the deep content of um, of the data of the catalog and combined with our understanding of linguistics allows us to bring back the perfect result the first time every time that's how you drive more revenue and we actually have the uh, benchmarks that prove that um, very brief history is that in 2011 apple launched the iphone 4s with siri and when they did that they created you know candidly the perfect user experience for a smartphone smartphone and that is hit a button, ask a question, and get an answer. And it really was quite brilliant. And that was the torpedo that hit Google's hull, because up to that moment, Google was a keyword search engine. What you'll find is almost every other search engine within an e-commerce solution, uh, whether it be B2B or B2C, is keyword search. And what that means is you look for words in a box and try to match up products that have those words without ever really understanding the context. So candidly, it's very limiting. But when Apple launched Siri, Google totally revamped their search. And two years later, they came out with an AI-based natural language linguistic engine that is identical to the architecture in EasyAsk. Um, so fast forward, we launched EasyAsk Mobile Voice Search in 2016. Um, and then some things changed recently. You guys may have heard of Chat G GPT which is certainly changing the game. Um, but unlike, e you know, unlike Easy Ask, you really can't take chat and plug it into your product catalog or your own personal data. We can with Easy Ask. Uh, so very briefly, the architecture that we have is identical to Google's and Siri's, by the way. Um, we can provide an Amazon-like search experience that we're talking about. Um, and the one, I should briefly say that our relationship with Infor, we've been an OEM partner with Infor for many, many, many years. We were the core engine within Storefront. Unfortunately, uh, there are so many things EasyS could do that we could not do within the antiquated user experience of Storefront. So it kind of lobotomized a little bit of some of the things that EasyS is able to do. And so a couple of years back, we came out with EasyS Direct, and that's the ability to connect and upgrade your existing Storefront site. So we've got dozens of Storefront users that now have a new user experience, a totally reskinned site a more advanced version of EasyAsk that provides search as you type, more analytics, better analytics, merchandising capability, and they've had a completely revamped B2B site. And over those two years, we've developed Amplify. Uh, it's next generation B2B, it's intelligent, it's intuitive, and it's deliverable, providing an Amazon-like search experience. 
And if I talk any more about Amplify, Robin will kill me. So with that, Robin, I'll take it back to you and thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so let's have a look at uh, Amplify. I've put a slide up that highlights some of the, the, the key areas that uh, were important to the customer base we were looking at. And it's important to remember that uh, because of our experience of working with Fax and A plus and Storefront, we knew what the real needs were for, for, that, for that marketplace. And of course, the number one thing was people wanted to be able to offer a mobile friendly and responsive customer site so that your users can actually get to you when they're not on their desktop, when they're on their phone or they're on a tablet. We wanted to be able to offer a really modern B2C style shopping experience for your business to offer your customers. And of course, we, we include real-time price and availability through the direct links through to the fax and, and the A plus systems. In addition to that, though, Amplify includes full-blown product information management, or PIM, um, which, which is comprehensive. It will allow you to, to manage every detail about the products. We also include something which is unique to Amplify, an automatic data improvement system. And I'm going to show you some of that. Uh, Additionally, we have a content management system. So your business users can manage the site. They can manage the content, the pages, the menus, and so on. So I'm just going to go through a, a few points of why, why Amplify as opposed to all those other things that, that, that are out there. And because of our experience you, through the EA Direct program and, and prior to that with with Storefront and, and other customers of, of Infor, we knew what was needed. And so we built this solution uh, from the ground up to take advantage of everything that Easy Ask is able to do. And, and as Craig mentioned, you know, Storefront effectively gave Easy Ask a, a lobotomy and, and meant that most of the advanced features weren't available. Amplify takes advantage of everything that Easy Ask can do, and I'll show you an example of that. But we've made it very, very easy to migrate from other systems, particularly from Storefront. So we've got standard scripts and uh, utilities that will just grab your Storefront data and put it straight into uh, an Amplify system. Again, uniquely, our software is available to be run either in the cloud or you can run it on-premise. And of course, if you want to run on-premise, then you're very limited with the sort of software that you can use. But we allow you to run on-premise. We support existing ERP systems, including Fax and A+, but also other systems. Because this is a, a modern system, we've used the very latest architecture, so it's very fast and efficient. And we've also designed it in a way so that it's very flexible and it's easily extendable to accommodate all the uh, mods and so on that we know exist out there. So don't think that this is a, a, a one-size-fits-all product. Because of our architecture, we can configure it to, to look and to operate exactly how you want it to work. And that allows you to provide this really modern uh, B2C style shopping experience for your for your customers. And of course, we include everything, the PIM, the CMS, even uh, online ticketing systems. And I'm just going to highlight a couple of these things um, in some slides before I show you the product. So firstly, a B2C style shopping experience is enabled because our architecture supports any front-end design. So you come up with a design, we can implement it as an Amplify page template or, or a template for, for lots of pages. And you can have multiple templates too. We can give you the functionality to make your customers love the way they shop with you. So we can create or configure widgets that we can be dropped into any page uh, to do virtually anything. And we'll show you some examples of that. Of course, 
every site is always responsive and always mobile friendly. And there's a couple of screenshots there uh, of one of our customers on a desktop and, and the corresponding uh, iPhone view. Another area that I want to just highlight before we go into the demo is automatic data improvement. And this is functionality that allows your business to improve the product data in, in lots of different ways. And this can be done automatically when we import products or, or when products are updated. It can also be run on demand. We can limit which products are affected by, by different types of improvements. And, and what, what sort of things can we do? Well, we can correct common data errors. You know, we, we know from working with, with you guys over the last few years that there are lots of problems in the data, including actual errors. We can fix those. We can automatically categorize or classify products based on, on rules. We can actually extract attribute data from things like product descriptions. And, and we know that that is quite important to many customers. Being able to change the case of text, of course, in, in some of the ERP systems, everything is in uppercase. That's not a great experience for your users when they're looking at products on the web. So being able to, to change those back to sentence case or just to capitalize is, is a benefit. Again, because of limits of the ERP, we find that many product descriptions or product names are full of abbreviations and acronyms, which not only are, are difficult for the end user to, to, to see and to understand, but also are detrimental to search. When people are typing um, what they think that you, you might describe the product, if you've used uh, an obscure acronym, you may not find it. So we can expand those. And finally, things like units, inches, pounds, um, you know, yards, et cetera, all of those things can be made consistent. And, and again, inconsistency in things like measurements is, is a bad thing for search, but it's also a bad thing when you want to show filters on the screen for people to choose things. I've got an example, which I'll show you uh, on the screen, which is a customer who was selling lumber and this is this is a product name. And as you can see, it's full of information, but it's not great for searching. How can I find all the six inch wide planks of lumber? I can see that this is actually two by six by 12, um, but we don't have any attributes, so we can't filter on it. Our data transformation tool will allow us to recognize these key items in the product name. So the two we know is a thickness, the six is a width. We know the 12 is a length. And we know that because of pattern matching and the way that it's been laid out. And we can take those and turn them into product attributes. So we can go from having no attributes to having, in this case, three, three brand new attributes. And of course, we can change the product name as well. So we can change it to something far more readable by expanding those abbreviations and, and, and acronyms. <clears throat> Finally, before I jump into the demo, I just want to highlight the, the, the customer self-service features uh, within Amplify. And on your the site that you give your customers, when they are logged in, we can allow them to do everything that they need to do in order to run their relationship with you. So they can view account summaries, orders, invoices, and, and also being able to download PDF invoices is quite important. Being able to make payments, to, to be able to add further users within their organization, uh, managing addresses and so on, but also being able to message uh, within the organization to raise support tickets, to manage wish lists and so on. There's a lot of functionality within the self-service portal that we give all, all the customers get when, when they are logged in. And of course, it's configurable as to how much of that you allow them to do. And this is just an example, one of the, one of the screens. I'll show you this live 
uh, in just a moment. So let's just jump into a demonstration. <clears throat> so I'm just going to switch to uh, a browser. And what you're seeing on the screen is a site which is generated by Amplify. It's completely dynamic. Um, and I'm just going to refresh this. Um, and of course, this is responsive. So if I switch to mobile phone view, you know, it's perfectly readable by by the phone users as it is by the desktop users. Everything is is available. I'll just switch back now. And as Craig mentioned, Amplify is built around this superb advanced search engine called EasyAsk. And that gives us lots of capabilities. So to start with, as soon as I start typing, uh, let's just say I start to type Samsung, um, I'm immediately seeing results on the screen. I'm seeing suggestions on the right, even categories related to those suggestions, but I'm also seeing the top products. Now, I can fill in a full search and just do a search for, for Samsung Smart TVs. And just make sure that that is um, working crisp. Oh, there we go. And and so we get to exactly the right products. As Craig said, it, it, it's really important when somebody is doing, you know, mention several words that we come exactly to the right products. In this case, these are all Samsung Smart TVs. Um, this is a standard looking search results page, but this layout is defined by the template. So this would look very different on, on another site uh, or, or, or on a third site. It's entirely up to the page template as to how this looks. But all of the things that are on here are widgets that we can include, including, for example, the ability to show uh, the grid view here. And I do think we have a slight problem with the connection through here because things are, are going a lot slower than I would expect. But of course, we've got the grid view um, as well as the, uh, the, the the list view. But of course, most people uh, or most of your customers are likely to want to search using things like part numbers. And of course, EasyAsk handles that. And, and so if I start to type a part number, I'm immediately getting the part number pop up uh, or a list of part numbers that match. In this case, there is only one. And I can go straight to that product. And in this case, as you can see, it's a TV. And what we're showing on this product detail page is Again, a number of widgets which are getting information from the Amplify catalog. Obviously, we've got quite rich information here. So we've got multiple images. Um, all of these uh, can be shown in high definition. They can be zoomed in and so on. Of course, we're showing inventory and price, live pricing coming from the fax system. And further down, we've got even more information, multiple pages of information. In this case, detailed specification information. And also in this case, there happens to be a user manual as well. And this is a fully functional PDF reader, which is just another widget which is dropped in. And we support any number of documents or any number of classes of information that you wish to put on the screen. So that's just, um, showing how we can produce a really rich experience for your customers, give them as much or as little information as you want them to see. In this case, it's, fa it's fairly rich. Um, but again, it it's really important that uh, we stress how important search is, because one of the things that um, storefront and other info systems were never able to do was take advantage of, of the, the intelligence built into the EZR search engine. And I've got an example here of a product which has 
variance or, or skews within it. So this this is a type of cable, but this cable comes in lots of different colors. Um, instead of showing all of the individual products as separate products in a search results page and therefore filling up an entire page, we're showing simply one. In this case, it's a, a 1000 foot box of Cat 5V cable that comes in various colors. And if I zoom in to the detail page for this product, what we are able to do, and it is, it is coming. My apologies for this. We seem to, everything seems to be running a bit slow today. This is normally instantaneous. As you can see, what we're seeing here are the variants within this kind of product master. And so we can see all the different colors. We can see the inventory for, for, for each and every one. And of course, the user can order multiple colors all from the same screen and, and add those to an order in a, in a single action. And imagine this if you were selling screws or, or or something that comes in lots of different sizes, you certainly don't want to see those filling up a results page. <clears throat> so shopping, we, we try to make it as easy as possible for your customers. The layout of these pages is entirely down to you. We are very flexible in terms of the architecture. This is just one type of display. One of the things that's uh, really important about Amplify, though, is the fact that we're also managing all the content. And I've just gone back to the home page. And on this home page, you'll see there's a lot of things going on. Obviously, there's the content down here. But if I go to these menus, you'll see that these are actually mega menus. And these are mega menus which are defined by the business user. And in this case, the business user define that this mega menu has two sections. There's a highlighted products widget plugged into the second section, and there's a subcategory listing shown on the first. And if I go to security, it's slightly different because there's fewer subcategories. There was space to put in a, a vendor highlight, alarm.com, and to show some of their products there. And likewise for the car products, again, it's a different style. All of this is dynamically generated from the back end. None of this is coded, which means that the business user can go in and say, I actually don't like this image, or, or let's, let's do a, a highlight on Pioneer products this week. They can simply go into the back end, change the image, change the link through to pick some Pioneer products. We've also got extra pages on here, things like quick order, uh, again, another widget uh, that allows the customer either to upload a spreadsheet of part numbers and quantities or to simply type them in. Uh, we've got shop by brand so that you, your users, if you have a lot of brands, have got a quick way of searching for or go into certain pages of brands and, and viewing their products directly. And of course, things like about us, which are just non-shopping pages again it's just content so we've got an image and then a, a content item and then we've got a few google map widgets which are also built in to the product but changing it is very very easy if i just go back to the home page again let's just say for example that we want to update our home page and as well as featured products i'd like to show the new arrival products and I can do that very, very easily and amplify. I can go to the back end and within uh, our marketing section, I've got some merchandising zones defined. Uh, as you can see, I've got a new arrivals one already defined. And that is simply linking through to the EZR system based on the key new arrivals. And that will get whatever the new arrivals are defined as within the EZR system. And, and of course, that is defined using natural language rules and so on. So new arrivals could just be something 
simple like anything that has been published in the last 30 days or in the last seven days or you may want to be very specific and as a marketer say I want those products but I also want to include these two they are slightly older but we want to list them as new arrivals so we've got these zones defined so now if I go to my pages <clears throat> and I I just find the home page again I can get to things very easily just by typing in the filter box and I'm going to edit the home page and of course I can do this because I'm an administrator so we can tie down the access to who you want to be able to modify the pages and in here I've got a number of items and these are all the widget definitions and so here's my featured products and I'm going to put a new arrivals widget in there and to do that I simply find the widget and I know that it's a merchandising widget so in fact there it is um, it's the medium size slider we have a small one and we have a medium one and of course we can create as many more as needed but in this case I'm going to choose this medium slider and when I click on it the system asked me to specify some parameters or, or attributes and the title in this case I want to call it new arrivals so I simply type that and I'm going to select the merchandising zone new arrivals which we were looking at just now I can put a limit on the number of products that will be pulled in do I want to show a cart button and so on and so on I'm just going to leave those as the default and I'm going to generate that widget and simply copy that widget definition and paste it into there so it's above the featured products and now I'm just going to save that page and now if I refresh my home page we should see new arrivals um, appear in yep and so so now we've got a new arrivals merchandising zone and very very straightforward of course I could have put that on any page I just chose to put it on the home page uh, uh, for, for demo purposes so it's it's very very easy to manage pages I can create pages I can link pages into menus I can reorder my menus and I can add menus and so on so everything is dynamic that's what I'm trying to get across here before uh, before I go any further, I just want to make sure that I get time to show you uh, the data transformation that I showed you on the slide. And that was uh, modifying lumber products. And I've got some here, extract lumber sizes. And the best way to show you this data transformation in action is to actually test it. We have a test module. And if I click on the test for that particular uh, data improvement it allows me to choose a product to test against and, and in this case I know that product ID 103 is right I could have done a search for it, of course but uh, what I've done now is I've specified that I'm going to test against product 103 and so the product has been loaded here and and you can see if I just scroll down I've got all the product data for this product which is a piece of lumber as you can see it's a two inch by 12 inch by 18 foot piece of douglas fir um, interesting though it's got no product attributes there are no product attributes in this data and that was a feature of this data that made this such an important uh, process and i'm going to now run through the the steps that we defined in order to process this but i'm going to do it a single step at a time so that you can see what's happening so firstly we check whether it matches the pattern that we defined it does and then we did an extract and now we've got the thickness the width and the length and now if i just single step through these now we're running these store commands which now store these as attributes so now we've got a thickness a width and a length attribute now if i carry on you'll see that we've got a number of replacements to be done on the product name so if you keep an eye on this product name in the top left 
you'll see it change as I run through these things. Not everyone affects every product, but there. So we've gone from a product name, which was all uppercase, full of abbreviations, to a product name, which is much more searchable, much easier to read, but also we've now got product attributes. Hopefully you can see what, what's been happening there. Of course, we would normally create these for you as part of the implementation product, but you can create them yourself as well. So I'm just going to exit from that. And I just want to finish by showing you um, the uh, customer self-service module within the, the front end. So if I, I'm logged in at the moment, so within here, I've got a menu and let's just go to account summary and the account summary gives me various details again because it's a widget it's configurable that means that you can choose what you want your customers to see in this case this is the information that uh, this customer wants their customers to see and notice i've got invoices and i can click on the view invoices link to actually show the list of invoices and of course, I can go and check the details and uh, see, the, see the details of that and even download a PDF. Um, I don't know if we've got a PDF of this one. Yes, we have. And, and I can go in and see uh, the, the, the actual PDF. So, so my end user, the customer, has got the ability to not only pay invoices, but to download them to view orders, to convert uh, or to convert quotes to orders, and so on. And of course, from that interface, they've also got the ability to go in and look at things like tickets that they've created, and to to view the details of what's happening there. And this is a, a full-blown ticketing system, which is all built into Amplify, and of course, is all completely configurable as to how how it's uh, how it's going to operate. So those are just some of the highlights. Of course, we're only scratching the surface because we don't really have time to show a great deal here. But with that, um, I want to hand over to Ralph, who's going to talk uh, briefly about the Sequoia ERP connector. So let me just go back and we'll go to there. Over to you, Ralph. Thanks, Robin. <clears throat> that looks great. Our role was to completely re-engineer the APIs used to communicate between facts and amplify for the best customer experience. While Infor chose XML years ago for their, for their APIs, we use a faster JavaScript-based solution called JSON. Its compact structure is not burdened with XML's verbose tags. The result, much smaller code for quicker response times. While Amplify can render documents in PDF format, as, as, as you just saw, we include a new, P, a new API for those who use unformed document management. Like the buttons you find in various inquiries and entries within FACTS, it allows your customers to access copies of their documents in the native graphic format they're accustomed to seeing. <clears throat> the new APIs are also more efficient. JSON is a ready-to-use object as there is no need to first parse the XML to form the request. We've also significantly reduced the time required for product availability inquiries. Previously, if you had a multi-warehouse environment, separate APIs were issued for each warehouse before presenting the results, and each request necessarily needed to access the item table every time. Our approach is to send a single request with a list of desired warehouse values. The item table is queried once and the results are returned in a single envelope. We also provide the ability to selectively disable or capture detailed logging information by API for testing or security reasons. Lastly, our solution offers the lowest total cost of ownership. The Sequoia API connector software is licensed once and there are no recurring annual fees. We're also happy to create custom APIs upon request 
as we've done within our customer base. Now I'd like to turn it over to Nadia Nadim, Senior Product Manager for the Compass Group at Infor. Nadia? All right, so my name is Nadia and I have been with Infor for 20 years with extensive experience in CRM and campaign management solutions, which have been part of the Infor Compass Group, more specifically the customer experience business unit. So the campaign management solution, as you can, yeah, thank you so much for sharing the slide. So campaign management solution serves as an integrated database marketing solution for planning, executing, and monitoring permission-based multi-channel marketing campaigns across multiple touch points. It allows you to nurture your customer base and build loyalty with an easy to use and comprehensive scalable solution. And it connects to your customers with real time results. It includes email marketing, social marketing, digital marketing, you name it, and all the dynamic offers um, which you want to promote to the customer, whether it's B2B or B2C market. So um, having said that, that was just my experience throughout that 20 years Time frame recently, Fax and A Plus have been moved into the Compass division. And as ERP distribution products, I am the new product manager for both these products. And um, we just recently released the product lifecycle document back in December. And if you don't have the copy of that document, please reach out to support and get that copy. I'm working right now on finalizing the roadmap items and future direction for FACS and A+. And it was very important for me to review all the available e-commerce solutions. So I'm really delighted to see a lot of these features in Amplify, which FACS and A+, customers have been expecting for a long time, as far as I know. And it's really good to see the solution has both um, on-prem as well as SaaS offering. So that actually fits very well with Infor's um, compass vision. We don't want uh, customers to be pushed to go to cloud if they are not ready to cloud. So this is really good uh, for me uh, to see that uh, in the solution. So again, I'll be working with also Amplify product team to offer InforFAC customers the ability to use Infor campaign management tool and solution if you're ready to see that. Uh, we can always, um, you can always reach out to me and we can talk further about it. Um, the solution looks great, the Amplify, and I really look forward to have the roadmap finalized in the upcoming months. Um, I do understand we have really good channel partners, so thank you Sequoia for um, making this happen. As you can see in the Info Campaign Management, we also have a journey um, builder tool. This is like, you can create a customer specific journey uh, it's a very visual tool, how each touch point, how each channel is working for you uh, when it comes to your campaign management. So, so again, um, that's pretty much it from my side. Uh, I will be able to share my contact information. I think I have given it, uh, it will be on the slide. So please reach out and if you have questions, feel free. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nadia. Thanks, Robin, I think it's uh, back to you or Matt for Q&A. Uh, yeah, right. It's, it's uh, Matt, Matt, I think. <clears throat> all right, folks, great. Um, well, thank you guys all for attending, and now is the time for any questions that you guys have. Throw them in the questions box, and uh, we will get to them. Uh, we got a couple in there already. Um, so first question uh, for uh, both Sequoia and EZS, what does the implementation look like? And how do you get the site to work like we want it to? Okay, sorry, I was just putting my camera on again so that you can see me. Um, yeah, so so the implementation is a, a a process that we we we've been using is two two key key areas. What one is making sure that we get the site to look and act exactly how our customers want. So we we typically kick off with design-led meetings uh, and we have our own design team, but we can also take uh, a, a design if you already have uh, if you already have that. And, and we will then create Amplify templates. And then 
we create the the the, the functionality outside of the, the the standard functionality as as a set of widgets uh, or we configure existing widgets to make sure that the site operates exactly how you want and that includes taking account of various uh, differences that exist between customers and, and that can be data level differences it can be process level differences it can just be what what you want to show on the screen and so on so it's a standard process but what it means is that we can be very very flexible so we can implement any design so we can get the site to look exactly how you want if you want it to be a for instance, a, a, a Vue.js based site that is very, very uh, responsive as the user clicks around, we can do that. If you want it to be a bootstrap style site, we can do that. Um, there's, there's lots of options available when choosing look and feel, um, but the implementation is actually very quick. And typically we can get you a, a template to test within two weeks of, of, of kicking off the project. And then we will import your data, show it you in there. And, and then the rest is all about fine tuning the functionality to match your modifications. And of course, we need input from the customer, uh, but uh, we, we have a, a, a range of widgets. We have literally hundreds of widgets that can be plugged in and configured. So it's very rare that now now we're, we're we're into implementing multiple customers. It's very rare that we need to create a widget from scratch. But of course, there will always be uh, the occasional need to do that. I hope that answers the question. Thanks, Robin. We have uh, two hosting questions. So I'm going to combine them for you. Uh, so the first one is, if we deploy Amplify, are we responsible for hosting it? And the second one is, what cloud service is used to host Amplify? Okay, so uh, of, of course, if you if you want to host it on on premise uh, behind your firewall, uh, you can do that, and uh, we will give you every help uh, to to set that up. But of course, it does mean that you are responsible for those servers and the uh, the, the maintenance associated with them. Uh, the alternative is that we run Amplify in the cloud, and by the way, it's run in uh, Am the Amazon cloud. Um, to answer the second question, um, and of course we we uh, we manage all of that. So if you go for the cloud solution, you don't have the management uh, overhead, and and of course uh, we are responsible for making sure that uh, the the software is always kept up to date. We give you multiple environments, so you have test environments and production environments. All of that is handled by us. But of course, if you do want to run on premise then we are more than happy to help out in terms of setting that up, advising on the, the machine sizes needed and so on. Okay, I think this one came in while you were showing the television. There's a lot of information typed with that TV. Do we have to type all of that in? Um, we, we obviously allow any amount of information to be entered through the PIM through the screen, so you could set that up and 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 type it in. In in that case, though, we used uh, we 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 actually provide functionality that allows Amplify to link out to third-party data sources based on unique identifiers such as manufacturer part codes or or trade item numbers or EAN numbers and so on. And we can we can link out to um, third-party sources and grab additional information. So we could start with just a part number and having run it through our API, which goes to the third party, pull in all of the descriptions, all of the specifications, download all the images that are available, download the documents like the user manuals, the spec sheets and so on. So if, if the data exists somewhere, then we can get at it. Um, of course, you know, with bespoke products and so on, that won't be the case. And you, we can we can import whatever you've got, uh, but we do give you the screens to be able to extend it uh, as much as you wish. But in the case of those televisions that we were looking at, those actually came from a, a third-party data supplier, 
based on the global trade item number, which is just a a 12-digit unique code um, that uh, identifies the product. And we called out to the system, and in fact, we processed all of this customer's products in their TV category, um, which was about 250, and downloaded all of the data for all of their TVs because they they happen to be in this third party system. And of course, they're delighted with that because they've got comprehensive technical information and they haven't had to type a thing. Thanks, Robin. Uh, next one, I'm glad to hear more modern JSON scripts were written for better integration between Fax and Amplify. Where does A plus stand in this regard? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. And um, what we do with A plus is we are using the commerce gateway interface to, to get at data with A plus. So uh, the, the, there is no other API available to A plus uh, unless somebody has written a custom API. So we, um, we actually have a customer that is using A plus and we are getting price and availability um, through, through that commerce gateway, which has been uh, made available onto the web because in, in this particular case, the customer is using Amplify in the cloud and we are we are accessing the ERP data through through the commerce gateway. And we, we haven't seen any uh, performance issues so far. Uh, thanks, Robin. Uh, is the unformed document management system required in order to show PDF documents? Uh, that's, a, that's, that's another good question because the the unformed document management system is, is great for those those customers that have it or that that have licensed it, and and what the Sequoia API gives Amplify is the ability to say, you know, based on this invoice number or or or, what, or, or document number, um, do you have a PDF document for us, and we can immediately get that PDF directly from the un unformed system and bring it back into Amplify and display it. However, Amplify, uh, because it works with other systems as well, has been designed to be able to show PDFs even without that. So if so long as we've got the detailed data, we're able to generate PDFs and to make them look exactly like the original documents through the use of header and footer images and and, uh, and, and other configuration uh, setup. So we would set that up for you. If you show us an example of what one of your invoices looks like, we can set it up so that uh, Amplify can generate that. But if you do have the unformed system, then of course the, the benefit of the Sequoia API is that it actually accesses that and gives us that immediately. Okay, next one, uh, another uh, A-plus specific question. For items that are best sellers, how does Amplify know about this classification? Is this manually assigned to items or does it sales data found, or is it, or is it sales data found in the ERP to assign this and tag and attribute it? So that 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 is completely down to to the customer because if you have the sales data available, then we can import that. But what many uh, merchandisers want to do is to show not just best sellers based on whether they really are best sellers, but they want to be able to put products in there as well. And, and one of the beauties of the Easy Ask system is that we can say, okay, let's create a rule for best sellers, which says it, it is anything which has got a sales rank more than this or is in the top 200. Um, but I also want to include these products if they're in the top 500. Um, maybe you know for whatever reason you may want to kind of twist the results slightly um, and, and actually list them as best sellers even though they may not actually be real top sellers so we give control to the merchandiser but of course we can access that sales data if you've got it and we can bring that into the uh, system and use that for for ranking 
Uh, thank you, Robin. Next one, can product information that is stored and amplified be accessed by other systems, such as an internal staff system? Yeah, and, and we, we get asked this a lot because people like our PIM and they like the, the, the way that Amplify is able to make it really easy uh, for for the business to be able to do things like add images and to update descriptions and and so on and to add add new attributes, um, and so it it's it, it's a really powerful PIM in its own right. And and uh, I've been asked many times, you know, can we can we use that data? And and the answer is yes, of course. We can just give you an API that will allow your your systems, whatever they are, to reach out into the Amplify system based on some unique product identifier, whether it's the item number or an internal ID, uh, whatever you've got, uh, and, and we will pass back uh, different types of information depending on um, what, what you specify you, you're, you're looking for. Thanks, Robin. Got a couple more. Uh, folks, if you got any more, please throw them in the chat box, or the question box, excuse me. Uh, do you support B2C sites as well as B2B? Uh, yes, um, of course. Any any site can be um, limited to uh, logged in users only. In other words, kind of B two B. So you have to be logged in to be able to see anything. Um, but but of course we can uh, enable uh, various levels of access without being logged in, and that can be limited to just browsing. Um, so so that customers who aren't logged in or registered um, can, can simply browse the catalog and you can choose how much information you want to show there, whether you show any kind of pricing or not. Um, but you can also choose to allow customers to purchase. Uh, in, o in other words, full, full B2C functionality. And, uh, and of course that, that will be, be sent through as as uh, uh, as uh, a separate package of information through to the ERP system, and it depends on how your ERP is configured as to how how that is handled. But of course, um, that that uh, that that means that you can do full B to B to C as well as B to B in 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 varying levels. You know whether that's allowing full purchase capabilities, uh, browse, or or nothing at all. Okay, there are lots of companies vying for our B2B business. So what makes Amplify different from its competitors? Well, I guess uh, when I look at uh, the, the existing customers that we've been dealing with, the, the, the biggest thing is that we truly understand what the, uh, the, the, the marketplace has been going through people who who've had to put up with things like storefront and and the, uh, the 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 promises that were that never came to fruition from storefront that you'd be able to offer this wonderful shopping experience to your customers and of course that that's not the case and so we've we've made sure that we built amplify from the ground up to satisfy the needs of those people that were really disappointed with things like storefront and, and don't want to go through that that kind of painful process again. In addition, of course, because we we started this uh, two, two, two and a half years ago, we chose the very latest technology to make sure that we're never out of date and we keep that technology up to date as well. And that means things like our widget architecture for being able to easily modify screens to add screens to change functionality and so on means it's a dynamic system and it's dynamic in the sense that it's dynamic for every customer but it can be dynamic within a single customer as well and, and that's really important that uh, we're able to to be really agile with the way that we cater for any any customer's needs and there isn't a site that we cannot implement and uh, I think that that's the that's the true difference is that we understand the pain that people have been through um, on on their B two B kind of e commerce journey. Um, we're not we're not offering you a one size fits all. We're offering you the ability to create the site that you want using standard functionality, which means it can evolve, it can change. As as we implement new customers, undoubtedly, we will be creating more 
functionality widgets. And as we do that, all of those functionality widgets go into our pool of widgets that any of our customers can access. So we may create something which might seem a bit strange for most customers, but it will be available. And, uh, and, and of course, we have hundreds of those already. Um, I, I, I think that kind of sums it up. It's all about understanding the problems. We built it from the ground up to solve those problems, to make sure that we're not pushing customers into the cloud if they don't want to. They don't have to change their ERP. We know that that's a, that's a big thing, um, but they do want state-of-the-art shopping experience for their customers. All right, that uh, that does it for the questions, Robin. Thank you. Okay, over to you, Matt. Oh, yeah, I think that's it, Robin. If you want to throw the uh, contact information up, um, that's going to do it for us. A big thank you to Ralph Wallace, Chris Tucker, Stephen Fitt, and all the people at Sequoia, Nadia Nadim, and Steve Krieger at Infor, and of course you too, Robin. We thank you all for joining us today. And as always, this webinar has been recorded. So if you'd like to receive a recording of it, please reach out to me, Matt Basson, at mattb at easyask.com. Thank you again for joining us all. Have a great rest of your day.